Uh, again, uh, said uh, Saturday had a uh, very hard fought game. Again, proud of the way our kids competed in the game. Thought they left everything on the field. Uh, you know, we didn't come out of it on top, but I think we learned a lot about ourselves and situations. A lot of young guys for the first time playing in that kind of atmosphere and environment. I think grew a lot. Uh, I think that was is something that uh, I said they, they'll feel, they know, um, and then they felt uh, after that game that they had opportunities that they could have come out on top of that game. But they understand that you know there's there's a different uh, perspective on how to get there. And uh, but again, how we played the game, how we competed in the game. Extremely proud. Again, we had opportunities out there on offense, on defense, on special teams, all three phases. I mean, you know, that we could have maybe changed the game. But, you know, and in those games, there's only one or two plays that generally do it. You fight for those inches. And uh, what our kids fought for them, I was extremely proud of it. We got to, okay, we had to, again, execute a little bit better in a couple of key situations, and, and you're, you put yourself in a lot better position. <clears throat> but Clemson was a great team. It was a great game. It was two classic teams that uh, fought very hard. and. You know, you go back to all the great games you've ever played that I've ever coached in and you've ever watched, you go back in the history of this school and any other school. There's always missed opportunities in all great games. I mean, that's what great teams do to each other. And they make each other press and do things and push to the limits. And all of a sudden, one of them makes a play and one of them doesn't. And uh, they did that. They have a very good team. But, again, we have a very good team, too. And uh, very proud of our guys and the way they compete in the game. So we'll move on and get ready for NC State this week. As you watch that film and you turn that film on, it makes you forget Clemson real quick. This team's a very good team, very dynamic on defense. Great front four, big physical guys up front that can rush the passer. And, you know, Rose and those guys can sack the quarterback and Street, Hill, Chubb, all those guys. The linebackers are active, play a lot of press man coverage. And what they do, they're aggressive there. The quarterback resets, a playmaker, can create big plays, hard to get on the ground. Uh, looks to a different kind of runner than Deshaun, but very, you know, is mobile and strong. Uh, they get the ball down the field. They run the ball in a lot of different formations, have good returners they, as they run a kickoff back against Clemson. It, it was a uh, touchdown. In that game, so you know, we have our hands full, and there's a lot to play. We need to have a finish this season out very strong. Uh, have a chance to have double-digit wins, which is always critical, and you know, appreciate having great years. And our kids will play very hard and go to practice today and get going for this week in uh, NC State. But to look forward to that. Questions? How did Sean grade out when you watched the film? He graded. He, he had there's three or four plays he wish he could have made, but there's three or four plays he's making, and we either drop the ball, fall down, or just miss a block. He's getting it off as he's getting hit, and he's going right to the right guy with the right place. I mean, he played a solid game. Is there some plays he wish he could have made? Yes. I mean, there's no doubt. But that's but there's not a player on our team that doesn't have that. So, I mean, he played it. He played a very. I don't think he played a great game. I don't think he played a poor game. I think he played a solid game. But that's when you play good teams like that. That's about what you're gonna get, especially with the you know the rush and the pressure and the things they were able to bring. It seemed like uh, early on, you guys. Tempo and getting played mm -hmm. in well, and then it seemed like it bogged down later in the game. Is that now the young center a couple times tried to overcall some things two or three times? He trying to think to, I mean, early not to blame me. He was trying to get get us in the right thing, and the quarterback calls for the ball. You got to do it, and he was he was trying to on two of them trying to read declare a mic and didn't let it happen. That's just something the youth once and once you get tapped or once you get the kick, you got to deliver no matter what. And we adjust on the run, and he knows that, and it just. Trying to be right. That came from a great place in his heart. One time we did let the clock go down there once, but you know. But again, we are in a great rhythm. They're going to make a few plays. We were moving the foot, even though on offense you didn't. You did, the disappointment we didn't get to at least a field goal on the one uh, drive we had the interception, and the other one we tripped. We're going in the end zone, just stumble. Guy catches us by a shoelace. We're going around the corner for a touchdown, and uh, you know we get that one, but uh, we end up with a field goal. But we were moving the football, which was very dynamic, and then we were punting the ball well, which Clemson had a long field the whole day. And you, I, I say this all the time, field position is critical. And it was you saw even in an offense, they're a very dynamic offense. But at the same time, when you make guys go the whole distance of the field, when you're backed up, it's hard. So I think from that standpoint. But, you know, that was a couple, though, we had like three delays on that. Two of them was he just trying to – we're calling for the ball, and he's trying to redeclare something and – just youth in that situation, knowledge, and then uh, once I'm, they just got it ran down. Defensively, what was kind of your thoughts on what they did, both good and bad? Well, I mean, I thought we, we tackled well, got aggressive, played the inside runs very well. Uh, late, I think we got out of our gaps because they, they were running passes with quarterback draws, as they, and the quarterback run game got us a little bit. Um, and on third down a couple times early, we could have got off the field and we had them backed up down there uh, two or three times. And then when you punt it, now you're getting the ball at midfield instead of letting them get three or four first downs. 
and punting it down there, the field position battle. We had a critical penalty on third down. We had them stopped on third and eight and got the late hit on the sidelines. They're punting from the 17 or 18 yard line. Instead, they get 40 more yards on that series and pin the ball down the other way. So, I mean, things, you know, there's two or three things in that regard. But it comes from emotion. It comes, not, nobody did it on purpose. It comes from uh, wanting to make plays and do things, you know. And there's a couple of times on blitzes, we're coming free and we pull up or do a couple of things at different, just different scenarios that. We could have made plays. But, you know, you, you start to see something, you react to something else in games like that. But they played well. They played hard. They tackled well. Kept, le you know, uh, leverage on the ball pretty well. The screen game, we, we both a couple big plays they got on third down. We knew the screen, and we just didn't trigger. We had to play and didn't just hesitate and backed up and let the lineman get there. If we trigger and make the play, there's nothing there. One was a critical third and seven at the end. One was a touchdown. One was a touchdown. Their only touchdown in the game. We knew, we knew what was coming and how it was coming, and we just didn't trigger and and make the play. But at the same time, man, there's so many plays in the game. They, they played outstanding. Just like a lot of offense, we, we moved them and we didn't get the points we wanted, but we moved ball, did some things. Third down, we got to get better. But, you know, that's a good team and you had good plays out there. But defense, I thought, played overall, played very well in the game, saying all that. I know that's a lot, but I mean, those are little things. I mean, those are those four, five, six things in the game that just, you know, just pop right out at you. But they, I thought they played hard, they played well. I uh, thought we pressured the passer, did a good job in situations. Played Really played the true passing game very well. What I'm saying is the downfield passing game. Played it very well in what we did. Uh, yeah, actually, he helped, probably as healthy as he's been all year, since maybe since the first year or so before that. I mean, his hamstring's fine. Ankle come out very good. So, you know, very happy with that. On that fourth down call, uh, a few people have asked me, why didn't you just run it up the middle? But in that sense... We got stopped the first time. Right, right. <laughs> but also, part of that, you want to give your best player a couple opportunities, a couple avenues to choose where to did, and what they were doing with bare fronts, they were going double league on pinching the threes inside. That's what happened on the other one. And what happened, the ball would have slid on the other one to the outside, but we missed a block on the edge. As we're blocking out, you'll watch on the blitz that we, we just missed him. And the ball would have hit and slid to the B gap. You know what I'm saying? And so with the pressure and them, them sawing down in, we want to get him on the edge. And on that play, again, we had the block. We just got to stay on him a little more. And he got, as he's turning it up, he got, that guy came off of a block and just turned him. He got his shoulders turned and came up and then short. The one was this point, third and two. Really should have had that one. We had the back receiver. If we just go in, receiver's right there to make it. If he just makes the contact, we're in, you know, we get it on third and two. But, again, it, and it's nobody's fault. I mean, it, it, it's, it's execution. We got to coach it better. And we just got to stay in there. And it's inches on both of them. Jimbo, after the game, there was talk about the run being over and it's time to start a new one. Considering all that you had lost from last year and over these past three years, how difficult did you think it would be coming into the year to extend that run that, that you guys have been on? No, I mean, I ex expected to. I mean, I expected our culture. We just got to go execute and do the things we did. I mean, we've had opportunities in both games that we've come up short in. I mean, it's, it was difficult then. I mean, people forget – I mean, during that run, there were so many games that come out to the end and how people played you and things go on. And you can look across the country. Anybody who starts a run, there's a ton of great close games that, that they're all like that. You know what I'm saying? And it'll be like that in the field. If we start a run again, there'll be a bunch more of them. I mean, college football has such parity in it now and the consistency to get up. I, I, that's going to be difficult. But answering your question, I mean, you knew it would be tough. It was tough last year. But – you know, that's our expectations and what we think of ourselves. And I don't mean that with arrogance, but, you know, we did. But also you got to remember, you, you got to truly understand the price you got to pay to have one of those runs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, kids and people, you give up a lot of things to prioritize to make sure that every I is dotted and T is crossed because to make sure that those, in those inches are there all the time. And it's not that we don't, but, I mean, you just got to, you know, you make sure that you don't let those things – get out of hand, and a couple of times they, they get out of hand. It's two or three inches, and then that's the difference in games. And that's been that way for the last couple of years. Where do you learn whether the team is, is willing to pay that price? Do you learn it in a game like Clemson? Is that off-season stuff? No, I think it's, it's all around. I think they definitely are, but they have to be educated in what to do, and sometimes it's got to be reminded. You know what I'm saying? It's not that our kids aren't. I don't think – I think our kids give their heart and soul and they, they work their tails off. But everybody look and say, can I get – you take a company who's successful. Everybody says, well, I'm going to come in and make it. And, and, and like a coach who comes in and they get Coach of the Year awards and their team is three and eight and they go seven and four. Well, there's a lot of room for improvement. You know what I'm saying? When you do things like that. I, I don't mean that. In, so, I mean, you're actually jump 40%. But once a team or an organization, even a company, it starts to run at a high, high level, what you constantly got to have is that same ambition, 
But those percentages may be 1%. It may be a percent in that little part of your game here, one little percent in that part, and another percent in that part, and all of a sudden that's 3%. Well, that adds up to the difference of those couple inches you have. You know what I'm saying? I think just making sure that you truly evaluate everything you do as a player, as a coach, as everything which we do, and make sure we can find those inches. And I think that's the key once you become successful. Because there's not going to be drastic jumps or things that people would see glaringly, in my opinion, once you have success. Because you're always expected to have success and everybody gets focusing on the result. But as a coach, it's just the little things in there that, you know, we, that you got to get, you got to find those one or two percent here and there that add up to three or four or five percent and can make a difference. And that's in everything, off season. I mean, even the way, I mean, how you go to school, what you do your classwork. The way you act, you know, what you do off the field, what you do, you know, for charity. And I know that sounds crazy, but it rounds the person and it tells you you're committed to being something above yourself and more than yourself and to be the best you can be in all phases of your life. And it becomes a culture for the individual, not just the team, but a culture for the individual. I mean, it comes in all facets of life. And that's why we work with our kids constantly in so many different areas. And I mean, and the, the funny, bad thing about it, when something bad happens, that's the ones that get saying well, of the one or two things that happened, but there's tons of good things too that go on like that and we're constantly educating in that process because if that goes good it, it, it's amazing how that translates to the field. And you, you said over the course of the year you're not where the team wants to be but you're about where you expect it to be and not just counting the, the two losses and the record but is that still the same? Do you still kind of view the team as where you thought it might be? Yeah, I mean I, I was... Defensively, I think we're doing a really nice job. Offensively, we're moving the ball. It, I mean, you can look at the numbers as far as moving the ball in yards. We're doing that. Points is down just a hair because I think our red zone efficiency is not quite what it needs to be. It has been lately. And third downs are down just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, those things, those are, it get, goes back to me talking situational football. And we work on them constantly. We got to, but sometimes on third down, it's first and second down that get you. And, and the one thing I probably say is more, a little more, a few self inflicted wounds that I wish we'd be over by now. A couple things like that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think that's put us in some tough situations. But other than that, I mean, we're relatively close. But, again, not where I think we can be and where this team can, can still be. Kimball, have you ever been prouder of a team after a while? I'm not, I don't take a lot of pride in, you know, in, I don't know what I'm saying, consolation, or what I'm trying to say, what word am I searching for here? Moral, Moral victories, there you go. Uh, but, but. As far as how they competed in the game and participated in the game, and you saw, I mean, the, when you see, when you're up close, it's just like you say, you don't ever realize these guys are kids, so they take their helmets off because everybody sees them with a helmet on. But when you can see a guy's eyes and you can see the hurt in his heart when, you, when you're looking to him and talking to him after a game or during a game and things go on, you know what I'm saying? Because no one feels worse when a kid, they make a mistake than themselves, you know what I'm saying? But from that standpoint, I was very proud of them in, in, in every respect, but at least – the way they laid it on the line. No matter if they did it right or wrong, the intent, and see, to me, that's the key point. Is your intent really genuine? Is it really there? You know what I'm saying? And I've been on some good teams that have won that I've questioned that. Not, I'm not talking about here or anything, but I'm talking about in the past and other, other places. I mean, and you've won some games, and sometimes their intents are, are selfish. You know what I'm saying? It may be from may be doing it for myself or my pro career or something, which is the way you got to do it. But, I mean, this team was truly committed to each other and played in the game I, from that standpoint. I was very proud of them. you feel like you learned something about them on Saturday night? Yeah, I do. I do, and I hope they learned something about themselves. Right. See, and I think that's the key. I, I think I, I say I, I don't know if I learned it. I, they did some things I expected I thought they would do, and I'm glad they went through it uh, as far as that competing. I hope they found some things out about themselves that can help us move forward and that they can See, move past it. On that same track, though, this game coming up is oh. the first game you guys haven't had championship implications mm -hmm. in four years. Can you learn something about how your team? I think I think this is right now. It's about class and character. I think that's that's what you're going to find out about the the character of these young guys and our organization and the class of it. Because still at risk is a tremendous season. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, our ultimate goal is to win a national championship and go to the playoff. That is, I mean, win the AC. I mean, there is no doubt. But you can have great seasons if you don't still have those things happen to you. You can still have. 10, 11 win seasons and go to a great bowl game and be successful and win a high percentage of your games. And I mean, that, I mean, that's what I, again, that's part of the part of the playoff when I was originally talking about that before, you know, I said the playoff, we got to be careful that I still love about college football. 
that you can have. I mean, when you used to go ten and two, or eleven and two, or nine and three, or whatever it was, and ten and three won your bowl game and go to New Year's Day bowl or a major bowl, that was a great success, and everybody everybody felt good about it. And what I don't want everybody to think just because you don't go to a playoff, which is a goal. I mean, we're all disappointed in that. But that doesn't mean you're still not – you can have significant seasons and great seasons. And we – that's one thing about college football that, that to me is great, that you can have a great taste in your mouth and have a great season and, and not be always be the champion. I mean, that's our goal, and we know that here. I mean, we're not going to hide that. I've never hid from that. But at the same time, to have a heck of a season and win 10, 11 games and, and – uh, when, you know, go to a go great major bowl game, that, that's six. I mean, go back of the run of the 14 years. That's what happened. I mean, you know, 12 out of those 14. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, but I mean, and I don't, and I just don't want the changing times to make sure that we don't forget that, not just with us, but other football teams out there that, that things are going like that. What does Sean play pretty solid, though? Do you think? I, I, I can't remember. You said Sean played pretty solid, so what yeah, we'll evaluate what we're going to do like we do every week in practice, and whatever our game plan is, is is, is which way we'll go with it. I feel comfortable with Sean. I can still feel comfortable with uh, Everett. So we'll wait and see how we're going to plan and look at what we have to do in this game to be successful going forward. What, what is the balance of finding because you guys still have a lot to play for and still can have a great season, but then looking at the future, wanting to see maybe guys who haven't had big roles. Is, is there a balance in that? No, no, no. I mean, you, no, no. We're we're playing for what we play for now. I mean, the guys in the future got spring and all that. And if you're a part of, if you're part of that, the next three ball games and the bowl game that allow us to be successful, that's what you'll be. But if this, this is not a, uh, I guess for lack of a term, like an NFL thing where you say, "No, I'm gonna play the young." No, 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 no. We're, we're, we've got a lot, we, and these seniors deserve that. These upperclassmen deserve that. Our fans deserve that. Our, our coaches deserve. I mean, everybody deserves that to to go out and be the best you can be. I mean, there's no. I mean, no way, no way, shape, or form that we're you know we're coming to win three football games, and we got to win one first. We got to play very well this week again against a heck of a football team. This team is a very, very good football team, and uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want any cliches or anything thoughts like that. I mean, no, no, we're 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 coming to to be the best we can be. And like I say, if this if that's the best this team can be, then okay. Tom D'Angelo, you want to go ahead? Yeah, thank you, Jimbo. Hey, uh, Jimbo. Sean mentioned the other night comparing this. 2012, he said that the success in 2013 had a lot to do with the guys, you know, those losses they went through in 2012. Can you, can you see that? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, because they're gut-wrenching. And, and you're like, how do I let that happen? How does this happen? But in games, when, and it's just a few inches here and there. I mean, because both those games, we had control of those games. But that's, you know, that's what happens. And I think, hopefully, you know, you wish you don't ever have to do that. But, I mean, you're not going to win every game. I don't mean that. I'm not trying to take a short road out. I mean, but, you know, I want to win every game. That's our goal. And I, mean, I think we can win every game, but realistically, things are going to happen. And But you, it's how you respond to them and, and how much it means to you to have that feeling five minutes after a game, good or bad, how important those feelings are to you. You know what I'm saying? And what you're willing to do about it. And if you're, and if you're willing to do everything you can and it doesn't come out on top, well, then so be it. There's nothing wrong with that. But just make sure you do everything you can that those feelings aren't there. And again, put yourself in the best position. Yeah. So, especially for younger guys, you know, in, in losing in the environment you lost. I mean, you you got to see a team storm the field, have a celebration, <laughs> and usually those are ours. You know what I'm saying? But they weren't. So, you know, that'll be interesting how they how they sense that or feel that. Yeah. I mean, I, I hopefully you don't have. I wish you didn't have to go through those, and I'm not saying right. you do. I don't think you always have to, but we're going through it, so hopefully we'll respond in the right direction. And, and one last, if I could. Um, yes. Sir. How tell? How no, tell you can't. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You can't. No more, Tom. No, I'm good. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm uh, messing. Terry Smith, how do you how do you look? He played well. I mean, a few a few cobwebs early as far as just getting rusty, you know, just getting out of the gate. But he tackled well, and you know, he cramped up a little bit in the game. But I mean, the, you know, part of that's anxiety and all that up there. But I thought he played a good, solid football game. He really did. It was great to have him back on the field. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. How, how did he come out? How he, he was fine. Roderick, Roderick just hit his rump. I mean, when you see it, he makes a tackle, and I mean, he's flying, and you can see his body bounce like you do on a, on a cartoon. You know, boom, boom, just hit right on it. Just it was just a bad bruise. I think it just it wasn't on the, it wasn't on the tailbone or anything. It just and he got all right. He'll, he'll be okay. And Terrence just typical. I mean, sore from playing a game. He hasn't played a game in a while. You know that that physicality. But I think he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Can Mario play? 
I'm sorry. Bender? Yes, he's capable of playing. He could. He, they okayed him. He would have been able to play because you know we were we were really low on backs all week. And uh, but you know we'll wait and see. Make sure health wise where it's at. And there may and, and you know I want to check that out again too. You know when, before before I do that. And there may be a year. You know you may be able to get a year back. You know what I mean from that series of of what happened. Does it surprise you how quick he's under been able to come back? Yeah, I mean, so he's got there running around. He hadn't really been hit yet. But, yeah, I mean, yes and no. One, it's, it's a remarkable. But, two, knowing him and how bad he has to play and the things he goes through and his, he's went through in his life to be able to bounce back, it doesn't surprise me. He's a, heck of, he's, a, he's a heck of a young man now in that regard. You know what I mean? Pretty, I don't know if I could go through all the things he's went through and the injuries and things going I mean, at that age, I don't know if I'd have been that kind of guy. I mean, that going pretty amazing. How much can you tell about a quarterback – not play as he's usually running the scout team. How much can you tell what their future is going to be like their first fall on campus? And with that in mind, how is DeAndre? You can tell from a uh, demeanor standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, a willingness to work. And you, you can, I mean, you see a talent level. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can see it. I go back to guys I've had that were great. You know, I go back to the Jamarcus Russell, Matt Flynn days, and Nick had come over there throwing a fit and thinking they were terrible. And Jamarcus is making throws all over the field, Flynn. And I can remember, I remember Mickey Andrews sitting there talking when they had Peter Warwick and Randy Moss and Dugans over there and I don't know who else running the scout team. And they had a great defense and the scout team would get 600 yards a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I mean, you can t- – I mean, and, you know, now I'm going to say this. There's a difference from playing off a card. And, guys, there's a transition now. Everybody looks at that card and, okay, I'm running that route and that's what I'm doing and I'm throwing the ball right there. You know what I'm saying? I mean – you get on those cards, it's easy because there ain't no ramifications if it's good or bad. You know what I'm saying? they got to take it to football. But what you can see is a, a guy's willingness to work, his competitiveness, his athleticism, and his skill level against really good players because they're usually going it against your first team, what they're capable of being. You know what I'm saying? And saying what you're saying there, I think DeAndre, he's, he's doing a really nice job for them. He's, he's been outstanding. We've been very, very pleased with what he's doing. Coach, that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Okay. Have you been able to appreciate what Dallas has been able to do so far this year? I, I, at times I have, but I think it's hard because of, of you know, as you're getting into games. But it, but it is amazing, you know. And, and, and I tell you what, you go back and look at – he's made some amazing runs, but we blocked some really good plays in those things too. We knocked everybody down and he gets to the guy and, and our guys know that there's some incentive there. If, you know, you get everything done right, that guy's got a chance to put points on the board for you every time he touches it. But, you know, I'm probably not to the fullest that I – Will after the season, hopefully, you know what I mean, continues to go. But, but I understand what he's doing. There's no doubt. We, that's why we keep trying to find ways to get him the ball. Individual or team accomplishment that you could set the single season school rushing record and not get. I, I'm I'm sorry. You said individual or team comp. Single season rushing record. What what about it now? The fact that is it a team or individual accomplishment? To Both. Get and not get? Both. Because nothing, this is the ultimate team game. Nothing in this game is ever achieved without great teammates. I, I don't care what you say. But saying all that, he is a tremendous individual talent who has done some tremendous things by himself. I mean, he's one of the best in America, if not the best in America. There's, there's, there's no doubt about that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because they, you know, they blocked and got him down the field. And, of course, he's made guys miss, ran over guys. But receivers are blocked. I mean, I think it's both. You know what I mean? I, re- I really do. And it's an accomplishment to him, especially his tenacity to play and to do the things he has to do to play while he's banged and bruised and things like that. It's pretty amazing. You said that Nate and Sean did a good job of kind of taking that leadership in the backup role at quarterback. Uh, how's Everett kind of handled that now? Kind of- he did a nice job. He, he, was, he was great in the game on the sidelines, helping what was being called, what was being done. You know what I mean? Trying to make adjustments to guys and talking and very extremely, extremely pleased with that. Now, that's the one position that's tough. If, if it's not a quarterback position, you can roll them in out, you know, like crazy. But that's just, you know, it takes some special guys to be able to do that. Hey, Mike, you're coming for set outs. had a great game against you guys last year. Mm-hmm. What does he do so well that presents this pressure? I think, one, he's strong in the pocket and he can make all the throws. But, two, he, can, he has mobility, escape. But then, three, on top of that, he's so strong. Getting him on the ground. And he can throw in tight areas with people hanging on him and, you know, a lot of guys, if you get once you get a piece of them, you know, they can't. But he's strong enough to stand back up there and throw the ball back down the field. And reminds me of a guy when I when I play, I coach. Reminds me of Rohan Davy a lot in that area. Could uh, plays with guys hanging all over him. You know, it's like a when your big brother's in the backyard and there's about ten little kids and five of them hanging on him. He's still throwing the ball down the field and they're all trying to get him down. I mean, that's what he reminds you of at times. I mean, just you know those kinds of things. And the play's never over with him. You obviously saw that when you recruited him because you guys went out and got him. 
yeah, we loved him. I mean, we offered him. We wanted him to, to recruit. It just he, – he strung it out for a long time. And then we – and now Jake Coker ended up – you know, we ended up taking Jake. He and Jake and then we're all in the same area, you know, same year. And I guess we're still picking pretty good guys in. They're both doing pretty well right now. You know, both similar style of guys in a lot of ways. Watching film at NC State, how have you seen the roster improve over Doran's time there? Oh, uh, defense line-wise, boy, they're good up front. The big guys up front can run on defense, the secondary guys. Again, when he got the quarterback, the offensive line, I mean, big. I mean, you see more athleticism, size, strength. I mean, they've, they've, they're, they're, they're a really good football team. I mean, everybody wondering why they play Clemson. I mean, they, they got good players, and they're coached well. They've done a real good job. Do you expect to get Lorenzo back at any point? Lorenzo. Patterson. Yes, it should be. Yes. I don't know when, though. Plus, Gerg, what's kind of been your thoughts on him? Because, again, it's another game where he's able to contribute. Be among one of the leaders in tackles. About where you thought he'd be, or is he kind of exceeded what No, he yeah, actually, once I got around him, I thought it was things I thought he could be. And he played really good in this game. Probably didn't play as well in this game as he had in some of the other games, but he played really well, especially with the environment and the atmosphere and considering he played a great job on special teams. Uh, but his competitiveness, and, and, and why I say that, after I met him, he was very mature, you know, when he was there in the spring, and he got that spring in. And then he's a very intelligent guy. You know what I'm saying? He gets it. So, you know, guys are intelligent, can process, and they can learn. And, and not only learn the plays, but he's a guy I think can learn some mistakes. You know what I mean? He, he carries, and his ball is very important to him. He does, you know, he, he just kind of got that knack. It doesn't, it really doesn't surprise me a lot. But, Again, I was very optimistic because I don't like to put that much pressure on young freshmen like that because you still don't know how they handle all the, all those things. So when you talk about like his maturity, like what's an example that kind of stands out? Like the way he handles himself in practice, learns. The yes, the way the, I mean all of the above. The way he gets the big picture of competing, that how important it is to be detail oriented, not just you know not happy to play. He wants to play well, so he has to practice well. A lot of those guys that have been so gifted in their time that, you know, they're, they're so athletic and can do things wrong in high school and get by with it. He's learned. And I think early that was part of what he had to learn. You know, even back then, you, you know, I could make, do a few things wrong, and I was so athletic. And I think that's part of what, you know, learning to play at this level too, at the, at the level where you're playing against championship, where everybody's as good as you are. You know, I, I think his ability to learn to, to practice and have great attention to detail, I think, talks about his maturity. Not just learning what to do, but he takes a lot of pride in the film study of how to do it. No, I've, no. I mean, I've had some outstanding guys. I mean, guys that have, you know, that have done that at, at, at different levels. I mean, Justin Vincent one year had 1,200 and some yards, and led us to a national championship as a true freshman tailback at LSU, and never played to the sixth game. He did that in about seven, eight games, about eight games, really, when you take it back to. I mean, so there's been outstanding guys like that, but he's one of those rare. I mean, I just, that just popped in my head right there. But you know, he he's just an outstanding guy who who does it as well as anybody. He, he's special. Josh West doing a heck of a job in that same regard too. That was the first time you got to see Sean really play in an important game on the road. What I loved about him, what Sean did in that game, there was no starry-eyedness. And when he made a mistake, he knew he made a mistake, what he should have done, the communication, what he saw, the demeanor. Even the way he ran the team, the way he called things. The team has tons of confidence. They, they love him, you know what I'm saying, and the way he does things. So I was very proud of that. I mean, he did it at home, you know what I'm saying, but the, the, the moment didn't – and I can tell by God that that did not bother him. Just that it was a good team on the other side, <laughs> you know, and they played pretty good at times. But it was, the moment itself did not. He was full control of everything, talking, communicating, you know, very into the game and what to do, ideas, you know what I mean, from that regard. When he was getting on the center about some of those not sounding balls, did you like seeing that? Heck yeah, or that's what, what you got to do. <laughs> that's what a good. I mean, and he's not getting on him to. But he, hey, this urgent. We got we, we're, we're in this, you know what I mean, and trying to let him know out there on the field because I'm not out there. The coaches aren't out there. Hey, we got to, no matter what, when I trigger something, you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, again, to me, it showed his competitiveness, his ambition. I mean, you think Tom Brady would have done that? You think Peyton Manning would have done that? They'd have they'd probably bonked him on the head. And I don't use that, but, you know, it's just, that's part of leadership. And, and they, they, in, in Everly, he don't take it that way. And I'm going to tell you this, everybody's going to be a heck of a football player. That guy, that guy's got a lot of really good stuff about him now. He, I, I say that, I mean, talk about a mistake, but I'm, where he's at and what he's doing. It just, again, that's another position now, guys. When you talk about all the things you got to do and mental toughness and making calls and then 
and then line up against a 300-pound guy <laughs> who's generally an upperclassman, a lot stronger than you are at this stage of your career or whatever. That guy, you know, he's very proud of what he's doing right now, too. You alluded to it with Rashawn as a guy who responds. I mean, just generally speaking, how, how do you They do the effort, too. They do the effort, too. No, no, no. They, they respond to effort, too. But they like, I mean, but you know why? Both guys are genuine. People respond to people who are genuine and, and people know, care about what they're trying to care about. You know what I'm saying? And those guys exhibit it every day and how they practice and the way they do things in the organization. I knew somebody was going to do that. <laughs> no, but you're right. No, they do. I know. I know. As soon as I said I said, somebody's going to ask me that. When you have an offensive line that's young as the one you have, and they struggle at times, obviously. And moving guys around and all that. But, hey, that, that's no – but we've played well at times. I mean, I go back, what, we've had, what, five 500-yard games this year? Five games of over 500 yards this year? One six – I mean – Four, five, and one is six hundred. I mean, so they've played well at times and done well, and but you know we can't use that as an excuse. You know what I mean? That's just something we got to fight through. How do you balance teaching them compared to scolding them? And- it's it's a fine line. I mean, it is. There's there's an urgency, but at the same time, you got to remember, women. I got to teach here, and it, and you push back and forth. And I think we tell our guys, listen. I know I'm pushing here, but I got to have. I mean, because there's certain things you got to have to be success. You know, and how much you give them, what we can do in the game, what they're capable of. You know, and you you got to keep bridging that gap with young guys consistently. You know what I'm saying? And that that's that's the challenge. That is, and, and it, you know, and a lot of it has to do with the, the quality of your opponents. When some of those opponents, I mean, you can't, you know, you gotta you gotta take chances and lay it out there. And the other day, we were just a couple inches away. There, it, it's, uh, if I ever sat down and showed you the film, I mean, guys just barely getting a sack or make. I mean, and we're just and the ball's ready to come out and there's big plays and you know it's just. But that's 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 when you play good teams. That's football. That that's just ball, man. That that's that's competing. Sean took a, a three or four chances deep, threw some deep balls. How were those the right decisions, and how close were they? To the Actually, all but one of them, I, I would have, I, I thought, were the right decisions. Exactly right. And there's one we didn't get off. Well, right after that fourth down stop we had, we got pressure inside. There was another. I mean, we we had to, we got it, and they got the pressure up the middle. We didn't get to, we didn't get to play. And but three of the four, yes. Were exactly where he should. I mean, should have went with the ball. One of them, I, I thought he pressed and should have came to a about an 18-yard over route one time. But you know, I hate to say that. That happens a lot of times every week. Yeah. Did he make the right? I think it was in the first quarter, maybe the second quarter. He threw a deep one to Bobo. Probably could have been called pass interference. Oh, that was a perfect read. Okay. He got to get rid of it just a hair quicker and get it out there. But I, I mean, I thought it was a face guarding. But you know, that's I'm not. Either way, I mean that can be called. But yeah, that was we got him in quarters. We had the over route, but they were in quarters, and the safety come down, and we got. I mean, he got behind him. I mean, it was a. We didn't think actually on the play. We thought we'd have a chance at it, but we really thought we'd get the over. But they give us a deep ball, and he went. He saw it and went right to it. You're thinking I'm gonna be. Tr- you're thinking I'm. I'm chumming here. No, 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 uh, no. Go. This question coming up. Uh, there was a play on. I think it was uh, Harris. I, I I'm on. Um, Everybody watch the game. Do you think targeting could be reviewed if it's not called on the field? I wish it would be. I mean, that to me looked like I, don't know I agree. How, how it wasn't. But I agree. It was a critical play in the game. It would have given you a first down. In the there was two or three things right there. We had a critical play on that one. Uh, we had a critical, uh, of course, in the red zone that time. Uh, missing that third and fourth and one, we're right down there. We had a drop that we're going to, we got a 10 yard game. We're in field goal and probably going to turn and make another 10 or 15 yard. I mean, we had, I mean, it, it, we all took turns on it. You know, defense, we could have got off the field two or three times on third down. We just, we had a little screw up that would have pinned them back. They'd be punting from their end zone instead of gaining 30 more yards. You know what I mean? It's just, but when you play good teams, man, that's just those inches you got to fight for. Two more questions. Go on the uh, bump on the offensive line. It's obviously a lot of procedure, all starts the left team. How do you simulate that practice? <laughs> we do it every way. We talk about it. We, 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 we we got guys up there yelling num- yelling stuff at them on the defensive line. We got GA. I mean, we got people. I mean, it's and it really we, we were really good till the second half of this game or right to the end of the first. You know, it's just and it's just concentration levels. And we do things that constantly build the mind, like the muscles in the mind, to try to concentrate more and, and out there in practice of not tolerating it. And you know, it's just they did it better. Now we got to do it for a whole game. You know, what I mean, you just you got to. And I hate to say it, it's almost like kids, you know, they focus for a long time, and then all of a sudden, if they just let it's not really lack of focus, just take a deep breath, and all of a sudden, it'll happen, you know what I mean? And then one guy will do it, another guy will do it. And it was a couple times it hurt us. I mean, it did. It was some key, key moments there and some critical things. And, again, when you get them over there, you, you have no idea how sorry they are for it. They're not doing it on purpose. And we, I mean, we got noise out there. We got guys in the D-line constantly yelling at them. You know what I mean? False cadences. 
You know what I mean? That which people do all the time. I mean, people. Don't say, I mean, that that stuff happens. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, drills. I mean, different cadences. We'll stop. You know, even make them where it's not. You know, not thinking it's rhythmic and stop a cadence and check it. And it's just a constant battle. We just got to continue to work at it. Not, I know you said it's not an excuse, but the fact that you changed the lineup, you had three different starting centers. You changed every week. There's gonna, obviously that that's got to play. It, it does. There's no doubt. I mean, it, it, but but that's the hand we're dealt. Get it done. You know what I mean? That that's that's. That's life. I mean, life isn't fair. <laughs> Everything in life isn't fair. You know what I mean? I mean, you got you got the hand you're dealt. You you deal with it, and you go you go do the best you can, and or, or be the best. And that's that's our goal. And we're never going to. And that's the thing I think here that I'm proud of these kids. They expect that too. Well, they always get it done. We do too. We're going to keep working at it and, and get there. That's why I'm, that's why I'm very anxious to finish this season like I want to finish it, and I think they want to finish it, and our fans deserve to be finished that way. Good.